Hello, I'm Larry Warren. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Thank you for joining us today. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have taught us how to live a fear-free life. The Bible says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law and fear was part of that curse. That means a fearless life is your covenant right. In today's message, Brother Copeland reveals that one of the ways fear tries to enter our lives is through worry and care. God loves you and he doesn't want any area of your life burdened with fear and worry. Discover how to maintain the fearless life Jesus won for you. Now, Brother Copeland is going to share personal testimony with you today. Learn how to cast all your care, worry, and anxiety over on God because he promised to care for you. Fear-based prayer brings and sets up disaster. Let's go to the book of Job for a moment. The very first part of the first chapter, verse 4, Job's sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day, sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning. Nothing wrong with that. And offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said. Now, he didn't say something of faith. He made the mistake. He didn't realize he was doing this. He made the mistake of speaking fear. Now, this is where it starts right here. He said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in his heart. Thus, Job did continually. Well, if he did it continually, that means he said that continually. He's got a worried mind, doesn't he? His praying for his children is fear-based, not faith-based. He's doing all the right actions He's making sacrifice, but he's not making it in faith. So if you make it in fear, you have to make it over and over and over and over and over again. If you make it in faith, you don't have to make it but once. Job allowed himself to get into Satan's authority. We found out how he did it. Fear-based prayer fear-based confession over his children, continual sacrificing over and over and over and never believing a one of them. Now, I want you to notice what happened. Let's just read in verse 13. There was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them, took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I'm the only one escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came also another one and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. Now, first of all, here's a bunch of wicked people that came on the scene. Well, God didn't send them, did he? Second of all, there's a strong squall line came through there, and it was full of lightning and set the whole place on fire. And then while he was yet speaking, there came another one and said, the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, slain the servants with the edge of the sword. I'm the only one left to tell it. And while he was yet speaking, there came another one and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind. 
from the wilderness, smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. Everything that happened to his cattle, to his children, to his property, everything that happened there is under the curse. None of that stuff came before the fall. None of that was in the Garden of Eden. Squall lines, thunderstorms, and hailstorms are not acts of God. They're acts of the God of this world. They came into this world when this world became contaminated, the atmosphere is contaminated, and the thing is off its axis several degrees, and weather is a serious problem. Amen. The devil doesn't have a whole lot of control over it. But when it sets up, he'll use it every way he can, and if he can prod you into talking like this man talks, then the storm is easy to run it right by your house, particularly if you will blame God for it like he did. Are you with me now? So all this stuff doesn't come from God. It came with the curse, came with the fall, and it came on him through the fear. Now let's go to the third chapter, verse 25 and 26. This is extremely revealing. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Now look at this verse right here. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Now why, what's he talking about here? How come you see that like this? Now here's what happens to fear-based believing. Fear-based praying and fear-based thought life. He said, I wasn't quiet. I was upset. He thought he was being conscientious about this thing. He said, I had no peace about this. I was not still about it. And now in our vernacular day, he said, I'll tell you what, I worried about this thing day and night. I prayed over them kids every time they went to one another's house. And I, I tell you, I did all I knew how to do it. It came on me anyway. That's what fear-based prayer sets up for you. Now God's the one that's getting the problem. You thought you were so sincere you thought you were so conscientious here. Oh, 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 and you think if somebody were to tell you, don't carry that care, you, you, all you hear is irresponsibility. You're not hearing faith if, if this is your mindset. John, when he was a little boy, just, just a little guy, we were on a meeting and, and uh, he... Uh, he got really sick and his skin just got like crepe paper and it was just, it was hard and, and red all over his body and any kind of light, particularly sunlight, he would just, he would just scream out with pain. He was really in a lot of pain. And um, I went in there and laid hands on him and prayed over him and he immediately got better. And I knew I made the connection. I knew I released my faith. I, I, you know, you know when you do. And uh, then he got, he got better for a little while, and then he got just as bad again. This went on back and forth for a while, a couple of days or so there. And uh, right before I went to bed, I went and laid hands on him. He went on to sleep. I went on in the bedroom, went to bed. I woke up a little while later in the night, and the first thing that flashed across my mind, you better go check on John. So I, I swung out of the bed and got up and went right back in there and checked on him. And sure enough, he wasn't doing all that good. And I, I laid hands on him and prayed for him. 
I thought about it all the way back into the bedroom. I wonder what's the matter with that boy. I'm doing the same thing Job did. Now, I didn't realize it because I don't allow myself to worry. I would have recognized, you know, big time, but it's sneaking in on me a little bit at a time, and I'm thinking all the time I'm just being conscientious about looking after my son. I went on back to bed, got up the next morning, and he was sick. So I, I went on and took care of my, my meeting that morning, and and uh, that afternoon I prayed. Now, I mean, I went before the Lord. I said, I'm, now, Lord, you can't miss it. It's me. I've, I've missed this thing. I'm, I'm off base here somewhere. What, what, what's happening here with this? And the Lord pointed that out to me. And so I went over to 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7 and rolled all the care of it over on him. I said, now, I'm going back to your word, and I'm going to act on this thing this time in faith. Now, not like Job, we don't do sacrifices, but we plead the blood. Our sacrifice has already been made. Amen? Now, the Amplified Translation in 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7 said, casting the whole of your care over on him once and for all. Now, I want to show you something. See my keys here? Brother Copeland, can I, uh, 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 may I borrow your car? Well, you know, I really don't mind, but you'll have to talk to Jesse about it. Why? I don't have the keys. I cast the keys over on him. I didn't say they weren't my keys, but I don't have them. And I don't want to talk to you about it. I cast the whole responsibility over on him, and I, I don't talk to you about, why should I stand here and talk to you about those keys? I haven't got them. You follow me? I didn't say there wasn't any keys. I said, I don't have them. Uh-huh. Now, that's what you do with your cares. Now, the next step that I'm telling you, this, the, next, uh, the next 30 seconds, I guarantee you your mind will give you a chance to be afraid. And it'll start trying to talk to you about what you just cast over on God. You have to obey the word that says casting down imaginations, reasonings, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of love, against the word of God, against what you know the Word already says about this situation. I know the Word says lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. I know the Word says that the elders of the church, in this particular case, um, John, well, of course, John called on the elder. I'm the only elder he knows. Back there then, he wasn't but about four. So, I know, Gloria and I anointed him with oil. The prayer of sick faith shall save the sick. I did all those things. Obeyed all those things. Now I have to obey the casting down of that imagination and that fear that it's not going to work. You have to get rid of it. Then the Bible says, be anxious, fearful about nothing, but in Everything. This doesn't mean this now and then when you think about it. Everything. Now, if God said everything, that means two things. One, it means everything. Two, it means you can do it. It's doable. Not without faith in the Holy Ghost, but it's doable. And it also means anything less than everything is going to contaminate your faith with that anxiety. Oh, Brother Copeland, you mean all of my thoughts? What do you want to put up with a little trash for? It says, cast them down. It says, be anxious, fearful, worryful, careful about nothing. But in everything, everything through prayer and thanksgiving, Continue to make your wants known unto God. Not through begging, through prayer and thanksgiving. Then 
It also says, casting down imaginations, every high thing, but now the next verse of that is, and bring in the captivity Activity, every thought to the obedience of the anointed one and his anointing, or you could put it like this, to the obedience of the Lord who loves you. Now, now, now what you do? How do you bring it into obedience? Well, for one thing, you speak instead of think. And then the other thing is, it tells you exactly how to do that. Think on these things. Whatsoever thing is pure, whatsoever thing is just, whatsoever thing is true, whatsoever thing is lovely. Now you could exchange that word with godly. A godly thought is a lovely thought. Something may be true and not lovely, you ain't got no business thinking about it. And every time it tries to come across your mind, it is not lovely to have a little four-year-old boy with that kind of fever and that kind of skin and that kind of pain. That's not lovely, man. So I don't think about it. Well, now, Brother Copeland, I mean, you got to think about it. No, I don't have to think about him. I turned him over to my heavenly father. Went through all of this process. Went to bed and went to sleep. <laughs> Woke up right on time. Better go check on John. And I got my feet about halfway out from under the cover, and I thought, uh-oh, old double mine is about to mess this thing up again. I'm not going in there. And you, if you had been there and could have heard that voice that goes on inside your head all the time. If you could have heard what that thing was accusing me of. Mm -hmm. You don't love that boy. What kind of daddy are you? Let a boy lay in there with a the cover off in the floor, laying in there cold with fever. Why, who are you? you why are you some kind of preacher of the gospel? You ain't no preacher of the gospel. Why are you a child abuser? I mean, every kind of a <laughs> line of bull you can think of trying to make me feel irresponsible. That's what, was, that's what got hold of Job. He got hold of him so severely that he didn't have time to run the farm for making sacrifices because he's afraid his kids are going to go curse God and die. That's one that they hadn't. I don't know that they didn't because he brought it into the family. Amen. But you notice how quick he handed me my keys back. You know why? They're mine. You roll that care over on God, but it is your mess. <laughs> the second that you begin to worry about it, talk about it, think about it, he just, it's illegal then for him to take care of it because you have removed it from his hand. It belongs to you, and you are a spirit being with a choice and a will. You can choose what you think. You can choose what you say, and you can go to hell if you want to, and he won't stop you. It'll break his heart when you do, but he won't stop you. You follow me now? Oh, I'll tell you, that's one of the, that's one of the hardest things I ever did in my life was to said, no, I'm not going in there and check on him. Ooh. The pressure was on. So I had to start talking out loud. I, I began to quote the healing scriptures out loud. I didn't go back to bed. I, I, I just walked around the room there. Gloria was asleep, so I, I didn't want to disturb her. And I, I just walked into the front room. We'd rented this little apartment in this place where we were there in, in meetings for three weeks. And so... I just walked in the front room of that little place and, and just, you know, begin to talk the scripture, keeping my mind on the Word of God. You can't fight thoughts with thoughts. That's like for trying to fight fear and faith and fear and faith in the same thing. But the way you were created by God, words have authority over thoughts. And if you speak out loud after having made a decision, then your mind and your word 
facility and faculties have to stop and see what your mouth had to say because the spoken word has authority over the thought word. I got up. Like I said, I'm walking around in there. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I'm telling you, it's like somebody had me by the tail of my robe trying to drag me in there and look at John. And that when, if I stopped talking out loud, I'd see him in there with his cover kicked off in the floor, just laying there shaking. <laughs> you know, I mean, all kinds of ridiculous trash. And I, and I just have to take authority of it. Well, what would it hurt to go in there just a little bit? Who are you, the devil? Don't talk to me like that. I put him in the hands of God. That's the most responsible thing I could have possibly done. I put him in the hands of God, and I'm going to keep him there. Now, knowing the difference between the Holy Ghost leading and fear and worry, in the midst of the Scripture like that, had the voice of the Lord spoke to me and said, Kenneth, do these things. That's a different deal. And brother, come on, I just don't know his voice like that. Go to work on the fear. You get it out of there, and you'll find out that fear was an impersonator. And he never quite sounded like the real thing. Yeah. And you start hearing him from out here instead of in here, and why, you can tell who he is every time. Just laugh at him, tell that ain't God. Quit trying to act like God, you spiritual Loser. <laughs> Amen. Finally, that pull and that tugging quit. And so then I just began to praise God. And I, I had really launched a scripture attack against Satan. I mean, I came at him with every fiber of my being. And when, the, when it broke, when the victory came on me like that, I just stayed up another, oh, I got about 45 minutes. And, and I got over in the Spirit, and just praising God in the Spirit. And God started talking to me about my service the next morning. See, it's all right with him all the time. He had no problem with that. The problem he was having was getting me out of the way. I went on to bed and didn't give it any more thought. Woke up a couple of times during the night and said, oh, glory to God, and heard it again. John's kicked his cover off, and it's cold in there. I said, ministering spirits, if he kicked his cover off, go in there and put it back on him, and just rolled over and went back to sleep. <laughs> Amen. Got up the next morning. When I got out of bed the next morning, I had my service on my mind. I, I, it just totally was out of my mind altogether. I left before... He got up, went on, had the morning service. After the morning service, up there behind the platform area, there was some people that had stopped me there, and, and a person had asked me a question, and I had just begun to answer that, and I felt this tug on the back of my, my trousers, and John said, Daddy. I said, just a minute, son, I'm, I'm visiting these people. And as I turned back around, he said, Daddy. I said, John. Just a minute, son. I'm, I'll be with you in a second. Now, now all that thing the, the night before never even crossed my mind. Why? My mind had been washed of it. And I turned back around. He said, Daddy, look at me. I'm healed. <laughs> I turned around there, and he was standing there in, in, his, in his little play shorts, you know. He was standing there and with, with no, no shirt on. And, he, and his skin was just as clear, and he just, he said, Daddy, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. <laughs> Glory to God.
You have a free resource to help you study and apply the Bible-based truths you just heard. Download the BVOV broadcast study notes today at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Collect the notes from each week and use them in a group Bible study. Use the message outline to teach from. Discuss the scriptures and key points with your family of believers. Gain understanding from all the teachings on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Get the whole week of notes today at kcm.org.uk slash notes. The world around you says you've got to look out for yourself and compete to survive. But God's plan for you is the opposite. He created you to abide in the power of His love. Learn how God's peace and prosperity flow freely in your life when you know and believe the love He has for you. In this series, Kenneth Copeland will show you from the Word of God how love makes a way. No matter what challenges and obstacles arise, it positions you to succeed. Walking in love is tied to receiving the blessing of the Lord. Train your mind to stay in alignment with Him and the understanding that He loves you without limits. When you were born again, you were recreated in His image. You have the same spiritual DNA as Jesus, and that means you can now walk in love with God and people just like Him. Enter into His rest and let the blessing work in your life. Know and believe God's love for you. Know and Believe the Love by Kenneth Copeland will answer your questions and convince you beyond any doubt that the love God has for you is without limits. Receive your copy free on MP3 or DVD at kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01-225-787-310. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office today. Praise the name of the Lord. I have good news for you. There's no problem so great that our Heavenly Father cannot take care of it. In Him is all the wisdom and the plan you need to get out of any situation and bring you to a place of total victory. That's how much God loves you. If you'll trust Him and cast all your care and worry over on Him, then He'll work in your situation and help lead you into the best outcome for your life. The way to develop that kind of trust in God is by renewing your mind to the absolute truth that He loves you. The Copelands have a perfect gift that'll show you how to experience God's love in your life every day. It's called Know and Believe the Love. God reveals His love through the promises of His Word. Join Brother Copeland for this teaching and learn that following God's Word is the way to receive from His love every single day. Request your free copy of Know and Believe the Love and start enjoying a deeper relationship with your Heavenly Father. Go to kcm.org to get your free copy today. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Until next time, this is Brother Larry reminding you, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Let the Word of God build your faith. Kenneth Copeland calls kcm.org.uk your study center. You can watch, read, and share faith-based content and teaching resources available to you free.